What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here from Muscle Serpents Daily, and today I want to show you racks. A lot of people have asked me about racks and how to set them up. And as you guys know, I know some people like have one specific rack that they like or one company that they go with, and every rack in their in their facility is that. ARS, Freedom Breeder, Vision, you know, uh, Animal Plastics, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Sea Serpents. And I have a different approach. I like to take a little bit from everyone. I like to steal the best stuff from everyone and I like to make it unique. So I don't want to have the same rack. I'm, I get bored of it. Although I have some things that are favorites of mine for certain snakes and th other things that are favorites for different snakes for different reasons. I'm standing right in front of Vision. These are Vision cages. So this is not something you're going to put a ball python in. This is for bigger snakes. And I like these cages a lot. They're very expensive. Um, especially since the new company took over, but their customer service is tremendous, phenomenal. Uh, these racks are really, they're, they're blown plastic. This is plastic, this is not wood, it's not laminate, it's not um, any of the other substances that you usually see used. These are blown one piece plastic. If you look inside here, there's no seams, there's no, if, if snakes urinate or knock a water bowl over, they're not going to um, get through this stuff. And they have glass fronts you put on them. I haven't put, this is a new cage that came here, so you don't see the glass front right there. Um, what I do in terms of heating elements is, if you see, is I put heat tape that I usually get for uh, Reptile Basics. And I, I tape it under there. He was with some foil tape. And I hook that up to a thermostat, obviously. I don't want to knock this over too much. And so these get these are pretty easy to heat. Obviously, there's only you, you, you could put a maximum really of a stack of four here. I wouldn't go any higher than this. You'll never be able to clean them. And this is great for like Burmese pythons, my olive pythons. If you look down here, you can see in my dirty front, my olive pythons wrapped up there. They're not locked or anything like that, but this is a great cage for them. Also, my berms, Burmese pythons, you'll see in the other room. This is my cold room. I have them in the vision cages as well, and I have actually a couple big of my big boas in this as well. But predominantly, I stick with the berms and the, and the olive pythons that need this extra room. And we're going to go in the other room. I'm going to show you some of my other racks that I use, and why I've purchased them, and how I hook up my heating elements because that seems to be a big question. All right, now this is another uh, vision product, and these were the first, uh, I guess you could say, ball python racks that I really got. And this is uh, what's called a V70 rack. It's 11 levels high. If you go higher than that, it's really hard. And sometimes you hit the ceiling. So this 11 level seems to be pretty good. That means you can put 11 full-size ball pythons in here. These are all plastic. They come disassembled, which is really, it's a pain in the neck, really, to, to put them together. I don't like putting anything together. It's so easy, though, once you do it once. Um, and it ships much cheaper that way. When things are together in one box, the shipping charges are way less than when you have to ship like a big vision cage like we just showed you. Now, a lot of people ask me, um, you know, how do you do your heat cabling? Because with these racks, okay, and the good thing about these racks, you can take them outside, you can hose them down. Um, but these racks, you have to use heat cabling. And some people don't like heat cabling or they're intimidated by it. I actually like it. I don't, I, I don't mind it too much. The problem is sometimes if, you get a, if a rodent escapes and they chew the thing, you, you got to replace it. Um, so that's the only thing that you have to be careful of. But that's the case with any kind of cord. If a rodent gets out and chews the cord, you're gonna have to replace it. Um, what I do is, once again, and, and I've, <laughs> if you come over here, I'll show you. This is how the heat cabling comes. It comes in a box like this from ZooMed. And yeah, it's all wrapped up. And you have to try to figure out how all this heat, this 52 foot heat cable is gonna fit so that you can get all 11 levels done. And invariably, when I first started doing it, I always messed up and ran out of, out of cabling before I got to the top one or two um, situation. And, and that was not fun. So what I, what I realized, if you look at how I figured it out, is two loops here. So you go in, you loop once, you loop twice, and you come back out. And this is perfect. And a lot of people say, is this enough hot spot? for the snakes to digest. Well, for a full-grown ball python, yeah, I think it is. I think this, is, this little area here is enough heat. Because remember, when this is going to heat the bottom of the tub here. And it's going to spread a little bit. So it's not just where the heat is. And, and I don't have any problem with the snakes keeping warm enough. Um, when they want to lay eggs, they lay right on that hot spot area. The key is with any kind of heat cabling or 
even heat tape or anything like that, you got to constantly check it every once in a while to make sure it's working. Because every once in a while I find out, oh, you know what, the heat's not working, a cable got chewed or something just gave out, I had to replace it. Luckily for this, if something is chewed with the heat cabling, it doesn't start a fire. It usually just stops working. And that's, that's, that's I'd rather have that happen than, you know, have my whole facility burn down. Although luckily I, I do have um, sprinkler, sprinkler systems here. Uh, just to hopefully those things never go off, but if God forbid I had a fire, they, they would. All right, so this is Vision um, cages for ball pythons. Now, my, my newest cages that I've gotten here, these are my Freedom Breeders I just got, and these are boa tubs. This is actually my new favorite rack. Now, obviously, I wouldn't put ball pythons in here, but these are four foot you know, cages, drawers, essentially. Um, you, I put my paper down here, and I put, you know, my usually a water bowl on this side, and I put my hide box over here if I'm going to use a hide box. If you look underneath here, or if you come around the back even, you can see there's heat panels here. And these heat panels, here's my probe to tell my temperature, which goes up to my thermostat on the top. And these are probably the, the best way to provide heat. There's a nice big area for the boas to lay on. Especially, because, especially for the big females. Um, once again, there's a probe that goes up to my thermostat. The one thing I really love about this is that they've developed a little, almost like a little hook that hooks on here. And I actually have the new Freedom Breeder thermostats. They make their own thermostats now. They're super cool. Um, they even have a tutorial online how to set these things up for the first time if you've never done it. I like the way it's tilted down because I can actually see, without having to get on a ladder, I could actually see what the temperatures are to make sure they're working. And I, I usually use this two zone for this uh, six or seven, uh, th I have seven levels here. I think I might as well get a seventh level in here. So th the first three are controlled by one of the thermostats, uh, one of the zones, and then the second zone controls the bottom three, or bottom four, I should say. And I find that so far I've been using these, I love them. They look really high tech. I love the little face, uh, Facebook. <laughs> I love the, the Freedom Breeder little stamp on it. They're really, really high tech. Uh, I have Freedom Breeders that are old ones that I kind of bought used, and they're still they still work well, but they don't look nearly as nice as the new ones with the white um, with the white drawers and the and the stainless steel. These things are not going to rust, and they were a little expensive these two, but you know what? I have some expensive bows, so I want to put them in the best. So this, this is one of my new favorites. Freedom Breed is all the way every day. I'll use these for boa racks. Uh, absolutely, I think they're king of the, uh, of the boa racks. Now, if we go into my ball python room, I'll show you some of the differences I have in there. All right, now this is my ARS rack, which I really love just as much as the, the vision racks for ball python stuff. Um, this is a kind of a mixed rack here with the adult ones. Oh, look, we got a shed. It's a very big shed. So these are the adult ball pythons. These would be what I call, these are like the V35s. These, these are for like grow-ups or the males will live in these. And then these are hatchlings here. So these are really nice. And I just actually, speaking of hatchling racks, I just bought a whole hatchling rack. I bought two of these this past year. And you can see these are absolutely gorgeous. They have big drawer spaces for hatchlings. Um, they have plenty of room for the hatchlings to grow. They can stay in there for well over probably a year old, some of them even more, because um, a lot of ball pythons like small confined areas. But it's a big hatchling rack. It, they, they're smooth the way they come in. I can, I can easily clean these things. They sit on, on, on um, heat uh, panels like the big ones do. Very, very nice. Um, ARS stuff. I really like their ball python stuff. They're probably my favorites. Vision's a little, a little cheaper, and I think it's easier to clean, and it's easier to ship, but these things are much more high-tech. They're a little more expensive, but I, I, I'm really loving ARS. I like the ball python stuff. And, and, and to be honest with you, I have some old Freedom Breeder stuff here. This is old Freedom Breeder uh, ball python tubs, V70 stuff, and I got to tell you, they're working fine. You know, I, you know, I don't, I'm not a, a snob. I don't have to have all new stuff. I don't mind using used stuff. So all the companies have functional stuff. The question is, which do you buy? And that's a personal decision. I like having a little bit of each um, because that's just the way I am. It kind of gives my room a little bit more character as opposed to everything looking exactly the same. And it almost looks like 
well, I can't remember where I put this, I can't remember where I put that. I have certain areas that I have designated for certain snakes, and I remember it based on what racks they're in, believe it or not. So it's really up to you. Do you want to use heat cabling? Do you want to use heat panels? Do you want to use heat tape? What are you putting in your racks? Are you putting big snakes, small snakes, hatchlings? The decision is yours, and it really depends on how much you want to spend. My suggestion is if you're just getting into it, look for people who are selling used racks. A lot of people getting in and out of the snake breeding industry, they want to get rid of their racks, they're willing to give it away at a good price, sometimes over half off of what they pay for it. A lot of times they're in very good shape. That's my suggestion. If you don't have that available, or if you're like me and you get caught with your pants down, and you're like, oh no, I have 300 babies being produced, I don't have any space to put them, you got to call up sometimes ARS or Freedom Breeder and say, send me a big, you know, you know, 36, uh, you know, slot rack or Vision or whatever, whoever else you use. I have Vision um, racks here too. These are Vision hatchling racks, and I use these initially, and, and they function very well as, uh, you know, too. They're a little smaller than the ARS ones, and that's why I've been going with the ARS ones. But I like having both because I put the small babies like like carpets in here. And whereas the ball pythons are a little bigger, and sometimes some of the boas are bigger, I'll put them in the, uh, in, in the ARS racks. Once again, the decision is yours. I wanted to just give you some of the options that are out there. There's innumerable different like, choices that you can make, and it really just amounts to what you like and what you don't like. I have a sea serpent back here uh, from Chris Nettles. He delivered this right to my place. I was, I, I was desperate for uh, hatchlings, and, and I love this thing. It keeps great humidity. You can see the, the, the humidity on the outside and it functions super well and it's only one plug it plugs into a thermostat and it works really well so once again the choice is yours i want to give you some options you know i can't really say one is better than the other they all absolutely function it just depends on what your budget is and what you love and that's what i always say at the end of the day you make the decision i'm dave palumbo with muscle serpents university